Hey guys, I've been doing a lot of reaction videos lately, lately, and I do mean a lot of reaction videos. Um, to give you an idea, I even reacted live to the conversation between Donald Trump and Elon Musk on Twitter while playing Rocket League to my audience, and then put, it, put together a video summarizing my uh, thoughts about politics. Um, surrounding that conversation but like politics in general um to give you some perspective i'm not an american but i lived in america twice in in the uk once i currently live in brazil but the reason why i keep making so many reaction videos is because um the best way to get to know someone is through their opinions is through what they believe and reaction videos are a great conversation starter and give you perspective about what a person is like, um, what subjects interest them, um, what they believe in, um, the way that they see the world, the way that in they interact with the world. So the, the best way, in my, my opinion, to get an audience to uh, get to know you is to present your opinions through reaction, reacting to content that you can find elsewhere so I try to I'm I've been trying to do this now that I have a, a over a thousand subs on YouTube and over a thousand followers on Twitter um, quite regularly so that those people will understand who I am and um, you know get to know me and find out if they want to stay with me or not right um, once again, I'm going to do another react this time to a Rev Says Dezu video. Um, he's another VTuber, and uh, us VTubers suffer a lot of uh, uh, discrimination and stereotyping. Um, but that's totally fine. I mean, um, we do have a lot of uh, people that end up use being VTubers as well that uh, give us a bad image. So we try our best to um, present ourselves in a different way so people see that uh, who we really are um, that besides being VTubers we're also people and we also have different opinions without further ado let's go to the video um, Desperate Clients Denounce Sweet Baby Inc. This is a video that I saw a few days ago I, n I didn't watch it but um, this is a, ma a subject that interests me quite a lot, and I wanted to react to it, so I decided to record a video to do it. To see its downfall thanks in part to its connection to the woke consulting firm Sweet Baby. Ever since February, we have seen a completely different narrative surrounding this company, which was once a badge of honor for these various developers to say how woke they are. It is now associated with their downfall and a lot of them are trying to remove any trace or connection to this company because it is a revenue killer. In fact, I'll um, I spoke a little bit about this in a different reaction. Um, game companies have had a huge inflow of money coming from private equity during COVID. Um, people saw that um, most of the public was staying at home and playing video games. So like private equity companies decided to invest a lot of money in the game industry. And unfortunately, they didn't stop at just investing money. They also wanted to give their two cents and also implemented DEI, which is the div uh, diversity and inclusion. But the problem with that is that they decided to change the way the games are but basically to make them more inclusive and more representing um, the several groups of people within society and that's a really bad take because um, you can totally do a game to do that if you want but you, you shouldn't take beloved IPs and change them f with that purpose because it feels forced People can tell that you're doing something that um, you wouldn't be doing otherwise. And it basically makes games worse because you're putting elements into the game that they wouldn't be there originally. And um, every single IP that has had 
uh, DEI influence or consultants that are associated with DEI, such as Sweet Baby Inc., which is very famous because it blew up uh, months ago on Twitter. Um, now they are finally realizing that they have to stop that. And recently, even Microsoft fired their entire DEI department. And companies are finally going back to making games for the public. Or at least some of them are. And the others are struggling to keep themselves afloat as uh, gamers are pushing back against DEI completely. Um, and games that don't have that forced upon them are games that people love and games that people that are very successful such as Ball World, sh such as Wukong, such as Stellar Blade, uh, Elden Ring and so many others. Um, so games that have DEI trusted upon uh, trust upon them are games that are failing and um, rest assured that eventually those companies will fail and these games will die because if people are not buying and playing those games they're not going to be successful a lot of companies are getting goodwill from gamers for actively denouncing this company. Black Myth, Wukong, and Game Science, the team responsible for it, are not only getting praise for the promising gameplay that it's showing, but also the fact that they allegedly rejected a $7 million extortion attempt from Sweet Baby, who essentially said, uh, pay us $7 million for our services or go at the risk of being canceled and labeled as some sort of problematic company and game. And that's really what we already saw. As soon as this news came out, we saw several games journalists come out with articles and hit pieces trying to slander game science and this game as well, which all of those claims have been debunked. Um, another interesting thing is that game journalists are all involved in the DEI thing, and they know the people that work on those consult consultancy companies that try to get those ideas within games. They all form like this sort of bubble that hates gamers and wants to make games more inclusive um, to, s in a kind of sick and twisted way, phase out uh, the majority of gamers that um, acquire video games, the actual consum consumer, into uh, a warped version of society that they think exists and it doesn't really exist. Um, so they're basically delusional and um, they're all kind of like forming like this mafia or bubble in which they protect each other and um, go against any anyone that threatens that reality, be it games that do not implement DAI or gamers that um, make lists of games that have DEI on them. Um, they are always pushing back against uh, the gaming market as a whole and it's getting uh, more and more obvious to everyone involved. But that's a story for another day. We've also seen a lot of companies try to shed their connection with Sweet Baby. We saw this with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, who at one point was proudly displayed on Sweet Baby's announced projects. Since then, it has been removed, and also a lot of the employees at Rocksteady have tried... That's your diversity, equity, and inclusion right there. Spider-Man 2 had uh, levels that were basically unplayable because they were just DEI inclusions altogether. Suicide Squad is a game that failed completely. Those others, uh, I'm, I'm not even aware because they didn't do that well anyway. Alan Wake did quite well, but Alan Wake is like um, a completely case. It's like a separate case all on its own because it it um it has like its own way of being ever since the first game and it did if if there's dei on it it does it doesn't feel like it like it's artificial or forced because that's the way the, the game was was planned um god of war ragnarok does feel forced because they basically made an order in order that god uh, poc people of color so most of those games that show up on this page here were touched for the worse. Try to denounce any connection to the company that they used to openly celebrate their connection to. And it's no surprise that this connection to Sweet Baby 
played a role in the failure of this game. The timing of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League's release couldn't have been worse. It was only a few weeks uh, before the massive wave of criticism would start towards Sweet Baby, and it's not really a big surprise that in connection to that, they lost $200 million in revenue for Warner Bros. In fact, it has been recently $200 million. That the Holy game shit. division saw a 40... The most prominent example of go woke, go broke. ...one percent decline in revenue thanks to this game, and has also lost 98% of its players. For a live service Damn. game released this year, that is That's an insane. astronomical loss of players. Now, a lot of games journalists and sweet baby defenders, they like to look at the criticism of Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and their connection to Sweet Baby, and they say, hey, that's an unfair outlier. That's just a game that happened to not do well for reasons that have nothing to do with Sweet Baby. But on the other hand, they also say Sweet Baby's connection is responsible for the success of Alan Wake 2. They always mention Alan Wake 2, and you can see it's proudly displayed to this day on their projects. And they say that not only is Alan Wake 2 one of the greatest games ever seen, they also try to claim it is a financial success. It shows that Sweet Baby's connection can supposedly lead to higher revenue. And that is not true. Now, at one point, in their representation about me section on Sweet Baby, they would even promote Alan Wake 2. However, after the big push against Sweet Baby started in February, you would see people at Alan Wake 2 start to panic. You can see the lead developer here trying to say that it's not true that Sweet Baby had this uh, close connection to the development of this game and also some of the changes made to its characters. But just like anyone else trying to denounce their connection to Sweet Baby, this lead developer lied and they were caught in a lie where basically formerly they proudly announced that the ceo of sweet baby inc had a big influence on the game and some of the changes made to its characters that people have defined as woke and some dei nonsense and also a few days after that i guess the company was really starting to panic because they then lowered the official minimal system requirements for the game to run on pc hoping to get new people in because Ironically, this game actually got off to a really good start, but as soon as February hit, when the anti-Sweet Baby narrative really kicked up, their sales have gone through the toilet. And as you can see, this user collected an exhaustive list. I mean, Alan Wake 2 <clears throat> is a game that's good. I'm not going to say it's a bad game at all. And again, um, it's a game that was not as impacted by uh, DEI. As, as the other games on that list because it's a game that was already constructed in such a way that DI was part of it. It's not a game that was negatively impacted by uh, a consultant coming into the company and ch changing the game to fit a DI narrative. ...list of some of the bots that were being used to promote this new minimum system requirement reduction for this game you can just read some of these. It is chat GPT levels of nonsense here. It's obviously the product of botting and likely someone involved in the production of this game was trying to promote it through these tweets. And again, they got caught doing this and it looks really bad. And as it turns out, uh, Alan Wake 2 was not the financial success all of the supporters of Sweet Baby have been trying to claim. In fact, it is a disaster. This was reported only a few So not only it wasn't impacted for, for its quality as much as I thought, but also it didn't bring in as much revenue as it should have. Interesting. Two days ago by Remedy, the company responsible for Alan Wake 2. Apparently, to this day, they still have not generated enough revenue to start collecting royalties. That is really bad. So as it turns out, the game was fully funded by Epic Games, and Remedy will only receive 50% of the net revenue after Epic Games gets their investment back, which they still haven't. Damn. So the company That's bad. Remedy has not even made a cent, and they're not even close to starting to make any money on this. That it's is crazy. crazy. And like I said earlier, this game got off to a really good start with sales. In February, they proudly reported they sold over a million copies globally. But since then, they have not announced any further sales, and I think that's because they've been really bad. Their connection to Sweet Baby really shot them in the foot, 
And ever since then, ever since the big... I can't, here, I think it's more of a case of guilt, guilty by association. <clears throat> because the game was not so negatively impacted by having the AI on it. More so than by uh, being associated with Sweet Baby Inc. As in, um, it ruined the image of the game, not the content of the game itself. Pushing on Sweet Baby, it's affected their bottom line. They're kind of stuck with their connection to Sweet Baby at this point because it's so obvious. And they're still proudly displayed on the Sweet Baby official site. Now, moving on from that game, let's get into the most recent example of a game being absolutely destroyed by their connection to Sweet Baby. We're going to be talking about the game Capes. So this is a game developed by Spitfire Interactive and published by Daedalic Entertainment. You can see a lot of bad recent reviews causing the overall reviews to be mixed. And that is in part because of their connection to Sweet Baby. You can see Cabrutus here, the creator of Sweet Baby and Detected and DI. That guy's Brazilian just like I am, by the way. I Detected would add capes to their list. Now, this is something that was not blatantly obvious. This game is not listed anywhere on the Sweet Baby site, or there's no official mention of the connection by the development team or the publisher team. However, as discovered by some users, in the credits for this game, you will discover that they have basically the entire Sweet Baby team listed. 12 consultants from the company Damn. listed, which is a pretty big contribution from Sweet Baby. On top of that, look at some of the names. Do they look familiar? Chris Kindred, do you remember this individual? Well, you should, because Chris Kindred was the Sweet Baby Inc. employee who started, who started the entire wave of negativity towards their company. They were the one that sped up the negative reaction to Sweet Baby. There was, of course, some criticism of Sweet Baby brewing for months before this, but back in February, Chris Kindred would make a post directing their uh, followers to report and take down not only the personal account of Cabrutus, but also Sweet Baby Inc. detected a Steam group on there that at the time... Yeah, I, this this was like <clears throat> a huge pushback that involved even b very big streamers and YouTubers. And everybody was like uh, grouping together to try and stop them from bringing him down and the group down. And um, uh, it's basically the Streisand effect. The more they try to destroy this guy and his group, the more attention it generated and the more support he received to the point that uh, nowadays he he is like the biggest proponent of like anti-DEI stuff. Um, on video games he he's huge right now he he grew so much with this because they try to push back against them and by doing so the internet reacted and only a tiny minute fraction of the following it does now and of course we know the history that happened after this attempt right here however seeing that connection to sweet baby being discovered about a week ago the publishers would come out in a desperate attempt to revive the image of this game. And let me just say, it would only backfire even more. So on Steam, this Penta individual who works with a publishing team would make this statement. You are a little late, actually. We already had three months and 14 pages of constructive discussion about DEI in the forum and delivered a gameplay update focusing on exactly what the player base wanted, leading to an 80% positive recent reviews. But you don't have to take my word for it. You can actually read up on it yourselves. But we were already able to explain that Sweet Baby Inc. only worked briefly, mainly to bring the four to five people strong indie dev team in contact with fitting voice actors together with the devs two plus years ago and many first skeptical players were able to find out that there is no hidden agenda or something else we in quotes force down your throats or any other concerns they had besides a well-rounded diverse cast obviously so so he, he here here's what the problem is when you take a game that's like the, a brand new game that doesn't have like a established franchise uh a story that people know and love um, it's really hard to measure how much of it um, a consultant firm actually altered um, we can definitely tell when Marvel went woke we can tell when um, 
Lara Croft went woke, Tomb Raider went woke. We can tell when um, DC Universe went woke with uh, Batman being killed in that horrible game. Um, those things we can't tell because those are franchises we know and love. But a, a, a new IP, it's really hard to say. So we can't really measure how much of, a, of an influence they had. So you can see here they're trying to say, oh, you know, we don't have this connection to Sweet Baby. And the only reason you're mad is because you're bigots, obviously. You hate seeing a diverse cast. Well, I've seen the diverse cast and the uh, apparent connection Sweet Baby had to getting the fitting voice actors. And from people who have played the game and reviewed it, I have heard that the voice acting performances and their attempt to be diverse came off with these bizarre and seemingly nonsensical accents that really sound awful. But anyways... We continue on. They say, so why don't we focus the on the most important question that the original poster was mentioning already? Is capes fun? Well, is capes fun? Let's find out. Well, it had a few hundred all-time peak when it first released. Wow, that's the worst graph I've ever seen. Holy shit, it's awful. Now, only a few months later, it is at a peak of 28 players in the last 24 hours. Yes, that is another game completely destroyed. If it wasn't already destroyed, the connection to Sweet Baby being discovered was the final nail in the coffin. Now, seeing the reaction to that and more people raising awareness about their connection to Sweet Baby, this publisher would come back and add more, saying, uh, why are 12 people listed, the Sweet Baby in the credits, uh, when they didn't do more work on the game than connecting with VAs? It's an industry norm. That if you contact a company, you credit the whole company. Or at least that they will tell you themselves that they want to be in your credits. If we really would have wanted to hide something, we wouldn't have put SBI in the credits at all. Nor would we have already been talking about this in the Steam forums about it for the last three months after release. Another question someone said, why did you still work together with them? After all they said, where they respond saying, the devs collaborate with Sweet Baby Inc. in early 2022. We are aware of these statements being done by individuals connected to Sweet Baby Inc. in the years to come. But in 2022, there was no sign of that. It is likely that the decision would have been different in 2024. So Yeah, um, what's going on here? Basically, what's going on is that everybody that's being associated with either Sweet Baby Inc. or any DEI company um, has their game collapse. So I would say 2024 is the last year we're going to see the games that still release with um, association with consulting firms that implement DEI. Um, more and more game companies are realizing that they cannot have that because basically go woke, go broke. And I gotta say, I'll I'll be the first to admit I don't play games that um, have that on them. I don't play games that were ruined by DEI. Um, I avoid them like the plague because, um, if anything, especially for IPs that I know and love, I want to play the real thing. I, I I want my 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 game, my story, to be uh, original and not manipulated to conform to someone's agenda and that's just that's true for um most of the player base of most of gamers really because what happens is that gamers had want to at least when they're playing video games which is their one safe space do not be treated like there's some sort of like rejects of society like um white sees says males are evil and bad and terrible and uh, have consumed products that were forcibly made by people that hate them. Nobody wants that. Nobody's going to put up with that. And we're going to keep pushing back, even though I'm not white, I'm actually Latino. But um, regardless, gamers will keep pushing back against the narrative of uh, we are bad. Uh, we, we are the problem in the game industry because we're the consumers. So if we don't want something, we don't have to buy it, and that's how they get defeated, basically. Basically saying, uh, we contacted Sweet Baby in 2022, 
And now that we know all this stuff that gamers have exposed about this company, if we made the same decision in 2024, we would have gone a different route. They would not have worked with Sweet Baby. And here's another one saying, you have to learn that. And then they respond saying, as a company bringing games to an international audience, we take the term inclusivity and equality literal. We don't contone hate uh, towards any type of group. This includes among people of color, LGBTQ+, and others, white male gamers as well. It is sad that we have to actually word it out. It should be a given. We are all gamers, no matter who we are. If a diverse cast of heroes makes you not want to play capes, that's your decision. Yeah, the problem is is that they are separating white male gamers as well. Like, this phrase here is, is exactly what the problem is. Nobody cares if your game has a gay character. Nobody cares if your game has POC. The problem is when those characters are not introduced naturally. They're not part of the cast naturally. They're forcibly introduced um, and treated as if um, there has to be a, a diversity inclusion by people that actively despise your, your own audience. But we are surely not the enemy. At least we don't see you as one uh, for making this decision but at the moment some not all of you are actively trying to harm a small indie dev studio to teach them a lesson that they never really needed to learn now here is the hard part i think yeah uh, the wrong part about this is teaching them a lesson that they never really needed to learn wrong they need to learn they need to learn uh, you're saying i didn't know that sweet baby inc hated gamers and therefore, um, I don't need to be taught a lesson to not hire them again. Well, you did hire them in 2022. You did know that um, they were a company that basically in, in forces DEI upon a game. Um, They're a company that hates white male gamers. And all you need to do to uh, figure that out is go on Twitter and see the kind of things that those uh, people post. On their personal accounts and don't tell me that you're not in social media because guaranteed the entire game industry is in social media I see them all around every day and um, everybody basically knows everybody right um, it's like my vtuber community and Twitter everybody knows everybody and um, ideas circulate and you can basically tell what people think and when you make a hire, when you hire people like that to consult on your game, you're basically telling um, that they are more important than your customers. And I'm sorry, but that's what it ends up costing you. It ends up costing you your game. Yes, I probably do believe them. If they're trying to decide on whether or not to work with Sweet Baby in the year 2024 right now, they probably wouldn't because the reputation of Sweet Baby is that bad. But back in 2022, there was plenty of evidence to discover. I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but Sweet Baby is not the only consulting firm, obviously. And DEI was, wasn't was only enforced upon games by only consulting firms. It was also done so by uh, DEI departments within publishers. So that's not exclusive to Sweet Baby Inc. But Sweet Baby Inc. ended up being like the one company that got targeted once be people figured out what was going on and it became like a, a, a name that people could target so um, obviously there's other companies but that one was so uh, present when the whole thing was first discovered that um, everybody now denounces it about these sweet baby employees that made them look bad and on top of that let's focus on two things this comment about white male gamers being uh, welcome as a part of this audience and also the fact that this small indie studio is being bullied. Well, look at some of the employees. Remember this Lego Butts individual? This is a sweet baby ink. Yeah, th this guy is very famous. A lot of criticism. Yep. For a great number He's of very tweets, famous. they have a whole compilation of them saying all these disparaging things about white male gamers in particular. And on top of that, they seem like they don't really discriminate with some of their racist tweets. And making it even worse, Lego Butts for many years has openly shared their responsibility. 
Uh, you can tell by the, the the very Twitter handle that this guy's an idiot and he's a millennial writer. Um, Lego butts. It's the typical name of a millennial um, progressive DI writer. Or DDoSing, a charity event led by Mark Kern that was trying to promote female indie devs. So I don't want to hear about the bullying here. You hired someone who has openly try to sabotage events that were intended to help female devs. Like, it's ridiculous. You should have done more research on these people. You yeah, that's it, insane. And it was all there. All this stuff was public. That's what I said. You should have done your research. Like yep. Ago, especially the disparaging tweets that we just looked at. Those have been up for many years before 2022. And there's really no excuse for not looking into these people who I'm sure you paid a lot of money for their consulting services. And in wake of this post, a lot of people have been critical of it, asking further questions. But as we can see here, anyone asking questions and trying to have a further discussion are getting banned on Steam. Uh, once again, we are witnessing the dangerous connection Sweet Baby can have to the people who work for them. I think, like I said, for many years, it was a badge of honor. You could say, I did all my DEI steps as a company. But now people know the truth about this company and the devastating effect they have on not only the games they work with, but just reputationally. Everything surrounding them is uh, related to toxicity among their employees. And now, even some developers are begrudgingly realizing, yeah, this really hurts my bottom line, and it seems like everything they touch gets bad treatment. Gamers don't want anything to do with them. And now we're seeing people scramble, and it's good to see companies that are rejecting them, like Finally. Science, getting rewarded for shutting down Sweet Baby. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I appreciate you guys listening. Feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Um, Rev does great videos. I really like his videos. And he's completely right. Um, like I said. Oh, sorry. Like I said. Um, there's a lot of uh, videos that I want to keep reacting to. To be able to present my opinions. <clears throat> and give people a sense of who I am. In any case, that was the video. Um, please do like I did and give it a like, give it a sub. Rev does great videos. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.